nigga. Them accomplished bitch don't get that pussy wet. She don't give a fuck. Oh, best of luck. Best of luck. And I'm going to have to pineapple you. She couldn't wait to say that shit. Best of luck. I'm going to have to pineapple you. Because you're just not good enough. You don't qualify for me. When in reality, nigga, she don't qualify for him, G. Mm. Okay, welcome guys. Sorry about the language there, it's a bit strong. Listen, welcome to the channel, Little Black Button 91. We are here talking to you guys today. Well, about this whole situation, but I'm talking it from a perspective of now counteracting, I guess, uh, a few of the black manosphere kind of points uh, that I keep seeing as a rhetoric being passed around. I said this the other night, I said the reason why I wanted to talk about this and break it down is because I think we have some thoughts that are, are becoming aligned with how uh, 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 yeah, becoming aligned of how I believe white supremacy works, right? Because when when white supremacy talks about how us as black people are, the things that they do is either you tap dance for the master and you do what is it, whatever they say is correct, or you become a thug, a thief, uh, a murderer, or something criminal. Because that's what they do. They don't like having the, they don't like highlighting. The, the, the brothers and the sisters that, you know, are doing great work, that are trying to build up their community, that are trying to love upon one another. They don't want to highlight that stuff. Either you are this really uh, person who's tap, who's tap dancing for them, doing exactly what they want, right? And they're getting the credit and applauded for. Or the opposite happens. You become a thug, thief. Didn't... And that's the same thing white supremacy does. Because what it wants to do is criminalize and anima uh, make you an animal um, uh, so that the audience perceive you in a negative fashion if you don't do what exactly they say you should do. And I'm starting to see that same kind of ethic and rhetoric coming through in the black manosphere. Because as soon as we talk about black women, it seems to be either you are this submissive woman who doesn't say anything, who doesn't bat her eyelid, and it's just so compliant, or you are the opposite completely. You are now the villain of this show, and you are somebody who, listen, look at these modern women. They only want your money, right? These modern women, they don't want to, they don't, they don't, they, 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 they want to uh, uh, be the same as us, bro. They want to have uh, penises as well. Like, they, like, bro, like, it just becomes one of these wild things. You start looking at you like, ah, Boys, 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 boys. Is there no in between? Is there no in between? Can we think a little bit deeper? Is there no in between for us? Or is it just that? So I get concerned because when I look at this, the, the energy in this video, we're going to break down. This is a YouTuber called Steph. The, Steph is cold. First and foremost, I actually kind of like Steph cold. I like his energy. I like the way he um, actually is. And I think we would actually get on. But I wouldn't get on with his viewpoints. But I would actually think we'd actually get on. I like his. I like his. He's pretty cool. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, but when I, when I'm looking at the rhetoric and the conversation that's going on, it just sounds like it's coming from a very hurt place. And I'm using him because I look at some of the several content makers and they make similar of these kind of points. And I, I spoke about it the other night about they make the same kind of points. Well, we can't blame the brother if he goes and dates white people. Oh, she uh, is not as qualified as him. That's why she ran away. Oh, you know what? They only want Pookies and Ray Rays. I'm going to show you what I mean in, in a second when I break this whole video down. But it's just like I, I'm, I'm concerned that we keep going down that lane. And I think it's time for a pushback. You know, I think it's time that we push back at some of these kind of rhetorics and these contents that we're seeing because it's unequal. And it, it becomes, like I said, why is it every time I go on Black Manosphere, the only thing I'll be seeing most times, most, is how bad black women are, modern black women are. And the only other thing is if they are completely submissive and don't say a thing. Or they support black men and they are literally on the side of men, meaning there's no, they are literally on the same black manosphere bashing, or I shouldn't even say bashing, let me say having a viewpoint that with black women, they don't know, they don't know what they want. They only want rookies and paper, uh, rookies and um, uh, Ray Rays. You know what? They're only gold diggers. When they, when they spit that same rhetoric, it's a madness. Now, I'm not saying it isn't truth in the manosphere. There is, there is absolute truth in the black manosphere. There is absolute truth in red pill content. There is absolute truth in it, right? Not all of it, but there's a lot of truth in it. And I agree with a lot of the points that they actually come up with. I think that there needs to also be a balance. You know what I mean? Balance. But let's break down this video. If you're new to the channel, do me a massive favor. Like it, share, subscribe. Click on the bell button for notification to uploads. And for those of you who are returnees, you already know what it is, baby. You got the minerals, baby. All right, cool. Let's get into this. Um, I want to take it a little bit earlier on because 
you know what? After this, okay, so we're going to get to here. Just watch this into this. Okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, Pineapple, nigga! Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Why are we steady trying to qualify for these women? Why? Why are we? So tell me about yourself. Um, I make six figures. I have a five-inch digging stick, and it's thick, and I'm six three. And bitch, tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> the problem is, bro. They know who to play with, and they know not who to play with. These women know. These women know. Yeah. Oh, ooh, yeah. He got his shit together. Ooh, wee. This how they looking at him like this. Ooh, wee. That's how she looking at him. Ooh, wee. I can't run over him. He ain't no Pookie or no Ray Ray. Ooh, wee. He got it going on. He don't act like no little boy. Ooh, pussy dry. Beautiful stuff. Did you see how quickly it descended? <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, I actually agreed upon the point she was making. Listen, a man who's got his stuff together, or a man who's got his stuff together should then naturally lead into being able to, you know, be assertive in, in, in the way that he moves. It doesn't always mean that. It doesn't always equate that. Now, he talks about, obviously, the girls, or talking about Melanie and talking about the young lady as well on the show who, when they heard him speak, actually, I didn't really see Melanie react. I saw more the other lady who was in the dating, uh, speed dating situation react to the gentleman when he said nuclear um, physicist, right? But, you know, what his point was here is that, you know what, um, because he's got his stuff together, the woman is now scared because she can't run all over him. Yet the talking point that we keep hearing from black women, and actually even, even about the manosphere is, the women keep complaining that men haven't got it together. Right, that's the point he's going to use later on. Later on in the video, he's about to say all he keeps seeing on on Facebook is women complain, black women complaining that men don't have their stuff together. Right, but it's not for so. So why is she now going to be annoyed about the fact that he has his stuff together? So in order to make the cognitive dissonance work and to make the juxtaposition of 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 thoughts actually work, they have to add something else into it, which is. Oh, it's because she wants to run over him. So because she wants to run all over him, she don't want him to have his stuff together. So which one is it? Is it that the black women want him to have his stuff together and are complaining about broke ass niggas all the time? Or is it the fact that women really are saying that they don't want a man to be, to, they want to have stuff together because they want to run over him? Which one is it that they want? Right? Because you labeled it black women. You didn't say some black women, you said the black women. And, and I knew you meant a pocket of black women. No, you don't mean every single black woman. I know that you don't mean that. But it's like you, you, the, the, the generalization now, now comes into opposition. Because I really want the broadcast black, you know, Pukia Ray Ray, that they can walk all over. Or they want the, the accomplished black, they want the man who's got it all together. Which one do they want, bro? Right? But when you, when you, when you get emotional, because that's what they always accuse the women of being. By, bear in mind, by the way, there is no human being that's not emotional. Every human being has emotions, right? Anger, sadness, uh, um, uh, anger, sadness, happiness, um, joy. Uh, and I can't remember the primary ones as well. They're all emotions, by the way. Okay, just because you don't uh, show emotions in the way that a woman shows emotion, that's not mean you're not emotional. Okay, all right, cool. So, um, back onto the point of here. Quickly, it descended into. Into Pookie and Ray Ray. And I just want to go, just, I'm just going to scoot it back a little bit quickly, right? Because it, it's it's interesting. Watch it. him. Ooh wee, I can't run over him. He ain't no Pookie or no Ray Ray. Ooh wee. He got it going on. He don't act like no little boy. Ooh, pussy dry. Let's continue, man. Now, talking about obviously no Pookie, no Ray Ray, and obviously saying that her, you know, her pussy's dry now. Apologies about the language again, but um, it, it, I said this before, you know. Okay, so now we now we're using now we're using this, you know, extreme and street extremes, right? Because either she, you know, what I mean, like we're going from okay, because he's because he's not a Pukia Ray Ray, now she's dry. Because he's not a Pukia Ray Ray, she's not intrigued. And the opposite end is the opposite end is 
the fact that a man's got his stuff together. There's no in-between. It's Pookie Ray Ray, a man's got his stuff together. Right? And in this particular case, a man who's going to do nuclear physicist. And I and I'm I'm listening to it and I'm going, that's what I was talking about the white supremacy. I was talking about white supremacy um kind of talking points or the way that you try to create a narrative of agenda is create the polar opposites. That's all that exists. Either they tap downs for us or they are thugs, thieves, and criminals. And that's what we're kind of doing here. Either she is comp either she chooses this gentleman, either she chooses this guy, or she's just a she wants Pookie and Ray Rays. Oh, because she rejected this guy, all she wants is thugs and criminals. Do you see what I'm saying here? The same, the same agenda and the same way that white supremacy works and how they try to attack us as a black community is the same thing that this black manifesto is also doing in order to assimilate some power. You are creating binary, uh, creating binary opposite, binary, <laughs> my English, using binary uh, 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 opposing views and saying, this is, this is either you like this guy you want this guy or you only want Pookies and Ray Rays. How did you go from that to that? You already had a preconceived idea, right? You already have a preconceived notion of what black women, especially because that's what we're talking about, are. That's where the problem lies. All right, let's uh, fast forward a little bit again. I'll uh, get to the end, just pass to the end of what he says. 96 on that, it goes up to a 99, got a 96. They offered me nuclear physics, and I was like, why the f Look at both of them, bro. Look at both of their faces. You know what they saying? Oh, this is so boring. He's so boring. Bro, just look at their face. Bro, let's rewind. Look at their face. Her didn't do look. anything. Um, got my... I did my pie cat about a year look ago. Look at her face. You see how she blink like? You see how she she blink like? Oh, no, I might give a fuck. Oh, where your tattoos? <laughs> Talk with some swag or some thuggish. <sighs> Tell me you was in the streets. <sighs> His voice not deep enough. <sighs> he ain't got no facial hair. Come on, Brocky, keep going, bro. Now, I want you to notice how he went into the caricatures and stereotypes of the thug type of black man. It's really interesting. We actually feed into the negative stereotypes that white people actually feed us, okay? Um, and again, the extent of what white supremacy has done in terms of painting a picture of creating toxic masculinity amongst black men, um, we've bought into, right? We've bought into and it's affected both men and the women. Now, when we look at this situation here, I'm going to rewind it and look what, I, this is exactly what I'm talking about in terms of going into these binary opposites or binary polar points really quickly. Tell me you was in the streets. Okay. <laughs> Talk with some swag or some thug. Let me go back, sorry. You see how she, she blinked like, oh, no, I might give a fuck. Oh, where your tattoos? <laughs> Talk with some swag or some thuggish. <laughs> Tell me you was in the streets. <laughs> His voice not deep enough. <laughs> he ain't got no facial hair. Come on, Brocky, keep going, bro. Now, see how he went into, again, the caricatures and went into, oh, he not street enough. Oh, he not thug enough. Oh, he ain't this. He ain't that. Uh, bro, she ain't said all of that. Right? She ain't said all of that. She hasn't said all of that at all. How did you get that point? You read into the situation, which we all do. But you implanted your own ideas, your own feelings about black women, and imputed them into the scenario. Right? He ain't thuggish enough. Where did she come across and say she wanted a thug? Where did she come across and say she wanted a pookie or ray ray? Where did she come across and say she wanted tattoos and things? It's the whole ethos and energy. Maybe, Steph, if you had come on there yourself, maybe she might not have screamed pineapple, bro. Because you talk in a particular way, you hold yourself in a particular way that I don't like people lying and pretending as if we don't buy into um, cultural stereotypes or even say, there are, when we talk about culture, it involves a whole compass of range. And I can't remember the exactly thing. There are different categories when it talks about culture.
when we talk about black culture or American black culture or British black culture, there are certain tenants and certain um, uh, gates that keep the culture in a particular way. And of course, they can move and shift with time. We know this. But what I'm saying is people buy into culture because we live in a society where we are socialized to socialize. And when we socialize, we buy into the society's culture. And the culture often at times means there are certain things that we like. You're talking about, oh, he ain't got a beard. Okay, but women want a beard. It's beard season. Okay. But but who controls the, who controls those fashionable trends? That's another question for another day. Who, you know, what okay, she so again, that even the beard thing can be taken out because that's slightly less. But he went straight into saying, your voice ain't deep enough. You're this or that. Okay, cool. So she wants a man who's got a voice that's deep. Is there anything wrong with that? If you want a girl that's got a back, are we now questioning the fact that you want a girl with a back? Or if you want a girl with a pretty face, is that now questioning that you felt like a girl with a pretty face? Should we question that? Right? And what you don't realize what you're doing in this moment is you're trying to now dictate how she should choose. That's a control issue. That's why I said about it's very similar to how white supremacy works as an agenda because it's about control. And why I keep talking about as men, we have a privilege within our community when it comes to black women and black men in our interactions. We are so used to having some level of control over what women do. Look at what's coming out now. I'll just go back slightly. I'll go back slightly. Oh, uh, where your tattoos? <laughs> Talk with some swag or some thuggish. <sighs> Tell me you was in the streets. Tell me using the streets, tattoos, thuggish. Where did she say those things? Where did she say those things? That's why I'm talking about going to the extremes so quickly. And it comes from your own personal insecurity genders. And it comes from what you potentially might have experienced. But you've got to get a greater worldview. Because if we accuse women of always choosing pookies and ray rays, we would say to them, well, you need to change what you're doing. I would advise you, Steph, this cold, to change how you see the world. You keep seeing the world through the fact that a woman either chooses this kind of good guy or they only want pookies and ray rays. That's a limited viewpoint. That's a limited perspective based on limited knowledge. It's time to widen your scope. Right? All right, cool. Let's get back into the video. Pineapples. Yeah. Damn, nigga, pineapple, nigga. Don't give a fuck about them accomplishments, nigga. Them accomplishments don't get that pussy wet. She don't give a fuck. Oh, best of luck. Best of luck, and I'm going to have to pineapple you. She couldn't wait to say that shit. Best of luck. I'm going to have to pineapple you. Because you're just not good enough. You don't qualify for me. When in reality, nigga, she don't qualify for him, G. Now, I want to be very clear here. Because this is where I believe it's very dangerous. You know, we talk about women rejecting men. And men will say to say, us as men will say, it's not all men that when you reject them, they're going to be violent or they're going to cuss you out after you reject them. You're right. It's not all men. But let's just look at this group of cohorts, okay? Listen, look at this situation here, right? I'm going to replay it again, okay, of what she said to the gentleman, okay? Let's replay it. And I want to ask you a genuine question. Was she rude when she said, best of luck, pineapples, right? I, I'm, I'm purposely highlighting this part because I want you as a man, if you're watching this, to really start asking yourself some really key questions, right? Really key questions about how you feel about rejection, because that's where the actual issue is. It's not how she said it. It's in the form of your feelings towards rejection. You don't like it. Nobody likes rejection, right? Nobody likes rejection. But when you take it, what do you do with it? Let's listen. Uh, ship out in a few days. Oh, okay, nice. Well, best of luck as you ship out pineapples. Yeah. Damn, nigga. Pineapple, nigga. Don't give a fuck about them accomplishments, nigga. Them accomplishments don't get that pussy wet. She don't give a fuck. Oh, 
Oh, best of luck. Best of luck. And I'm going to have to pineapple you. She couldn't wait to say that shit. Best of luck. I'm going to have to pineapple you. Because you're just not good enough. You don't qualify for me. When in reality, nigga, she don't qualify for him, G. Mm, it does sound like a little bit projecting, bro. It does sound like... Just a little bit. Just sounds. Like, it sounds like you're having. It just sounds like a little bit like you 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 recalling what you might have experienced in your past. Just saying. Just it does sound a little bit like that, right? Like even the way he had to sit back after it. it, it it's giving. It's giving. I I've gone through this kind of situation, which I, he probably has. You know, we've all we all use our personal experiences when we're dealing with this situation. And again, like I said, I actually like Steph the Cold. But look, in terms of what he said, the girl this the girl said, "Listen, best of luck." Be on your merry way. It is what it is, right? What do you want her to do? Do you want her? Do you want her to give him a, a freaking cookie? Do you want her to praise him and take a date that she doesn't want to take? She's not interested. But you vex about the fact that she says she's not interested. Not just deep it. What deep? What we're actually really listening to? You're annoyed because she said she's not interested. That's the, why I said about that will be the same energy you give to a girl on the street when you approach her and she said, I'm not interested. You're going to be like, it don't matter what she says. The fact she says she's not interested, you're now vex. That's the point you're making because when you harp on the fact that she said pineapples, look how excited she was to say pineapples. Bro, she heard it for two minutes and she actually genuinely just said, listen, best of luck and pineapples. Now, because she said it a little bit softer, hey, maybe she could have said it a little bit softer, but it wasn't rude the way she said it. It wasn't rude the way she said it. You got to get over it, man. You approach somebody that can say no. They're allowed to say no. Because what it sounded like is they're not allowed to say no to you. How dare they say no to you? That's arrogance. That's pride. That's entitlement. And they're very dangerous uh, sentiments to hold because it always leads to violence when it comes to men specifically because of threshold for us as men. Right? And I'm not talking about necessarily Seth the Cold himself, but I'm talking about there is a, a bunch of men out there who listen this quickly, the sentiment of pride, ego, uh, entitlement, fear of rejection quickly leads into violence. we got to be very, very careful. You know what I mean? Like, why are we getting vexed about the fact that someone said no to you? It wasn't even an angry no. It wasn't even a disrespectful no. I've had some disrespectful no's. This ain't it. Okay? Right? So let, let's jump back into it. Sorry. Let's jump back into this uh, situation. Okay. reality fam she don't she don't step up to his plate that nigga got shit going on hey bro and let me tell you something g the reality of it is bro when you got your shit together as a man bro when you are going places it needs your, uh um um i'm not gonna call this chick regular but let me use an example and every did you know okay so two things did you know is he just he, he did something really interesting he said i'm not gonna call her regular yeah because she's fine bro you can say it no, you can say it, bro. She fine in it. Yeah? Because you, you, you're going to say regular chicks. I, I get it. But anyway, listen. Before that, it's interesting that he was talking about... Um, he was talking about she doesn't qualify for him. You know, we're, we're throwing this kind of uh, rhetoric on now, which is, okay, you know what? She rejected him. But you know what? It's actually the fact is he's, he's not good enough for her. Oh, wait a minute. But he's on the show trying to get her. Why is he on the show trying to get her since he's better than this kind of woman? Why, why, why are we, <clears throat> why are we now changing the narrative? It's almost, again, he's doing what people do on the roadside when they meet gal and gal say, no, I didn't want you anyway. You're butters, you're clapped, you're ugly, you're cheap. You're doing the same thing that people do on the road when they get rejected by a girl. No matter how nice or how, uh, how, how bad it is, the consistency is you. When you don't know how to react and take rejection, you come out bad. All right? The girl said she's not interested. Look what he's saying. No, it's not the fact that she's, she's out here saying she's not qualified for him. He's overqualified for her. You might just go and say, listen... You know what? I don't want you anywhere. I never wanted you. That's basically what you, you most just go on to say that. Because that's what you're really kind of saying. Because now she rejected him. Suddenly, actually, he's not good enough for her. Deep it. No, no, no. Really, really take your time and deep what's being said. Okay? Take your time and deep what's being said. Listen to this part. 
everyday regular human being woman who has a regular job driving a Nissan when whatever CNA, you know, lash tech or the, you know, these women are used to dealing with bum ass niggas. That's what y'all got to understand, bro. I'm from the city, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All I see on Facebook all day is these women complaining about how niggas ain't shit. Niggas is bro. Niggas ain't that. Then they come across a dude like this. You know what they do? Scared as a motherfucker. Intimidated. Because it's like, you can control that bum ass dude. You can control the dude. Baby, can I get a 3.5? Baby. Now, it's really interesting because he used several points here. He said, you know, he's used to seeing women on Facebook. First of all, most, you, know, you might want to look beyond Facebook. Um, Facebook's not the world. Facebook's just an, another area. So you've made it very in, you've made it very easy for us to able to discern it. Because you didn't even say, I keep seeing it. You said, I keep seeing it on Facebook. Sir, who are you following? Oh, that's what I want to know. Who are you following? Okay, that you keep seeing these things, sir. You might want to change your worldview. You might want to change your inputs just to kind of get a different eye perspective. How is it you keep seeing only women who keep complaining about broke ass niggas? All right, cool. Let's say let's take that into account. Let's say women are always complaining about that. Okay, cool. But then they then he goes on to say, listen, okay, but then when they meet a guy like him, they shook and jive away. Okay. And the reason being is because they are intimidated. Because he's got his stuff together because they want to be able to control a man. Do you see how that sounds? It the linear way of thinking is is now coming in saying, well, only black women only want these kind of only want men that they can control. Is that the case? It, it is it's 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 already put in a premise of women are evil or women are bad. The same thing that white supremacy does when it talks about black people. I keep saying it, right? It has a zero-sum game. That they ain't no, they don't look now. All of a sudden, now all she wants, okay, when she can't get the man, when she when she rejects that man, it's because she's intimidated and she wants to be able to control a man. Get yourself three point five, yeah, because I want to be able to control him. And he prefaced it by saying the regular girl. So he's already put this girl on a above the pedestal of being regular. I don't know if you deep that. He actually put the girl above regular. Listen, the truth of the matter is some of you want women that you can't afford. You get you go for women that you cannot afford. You go for women that you're not in the same dating market level. Know your level. You know, you guys quote Kevin Samuels all the time. What level do you put yourself at? Are you on the same level? You know what I'm saying? Look at yourself in the marketing, the dating market, market level and ask yourself, are you that level for that girl? Ask yourself, do you have the qualities I needed for that type of girl? You know what I'm saying? Hey, listen, you're the quality. You're like, you're not talking about qualifying yourself. But look, look how the rhetoric went to regular women and how they are shook and diving. And all they want is to control a man. That's what they want. Babe, can I get a 3.5? You can control him. You can dictate his actions, but you can't control you can't control the man that got his shit together, the man that got options, the man that's going places, the man that has his own income. They they run away. That that is why they run away from good men. Boom! Fantastic. Thank you very much. Love the point where he came to. This is why they run away from what good men. How do you know he's good? You know what? Jesus said it best. He said, why, the, why, do you, why, why do you say I'm good? There's nobody good except God. And what he was really saying is, you know what? You, you're saying I'm good, but there's only, there's only person that's good is God himself, which Jesus was God. And the truth of the matter is we qualify good in this instance just because he had a good job. Or supposedly going into a good job. How is he good? If you make a qualification saying this person is good, I need to see why you're saying that. I said this about the Michael B. Jordan. You guys keep saying that Michael B. Jordan's good. How do you know? How do you know? Just because he has a good job or a persona that seems good. Have you heard him talk? Have you heard him speak? Do you know his viewpoints? Do you know his perspectives? 
Do you know how he feels about men, about women, about family? Do you know any of those kind of points? If you don't, how you know he's good? The same way you're saying how she dismissed him in two minutes, you guys in two minutes are making deductions about him being good. How is he good? Please tell me how he's good. You are good and your mercy are forever. How is he good? But you make that assumption. This is why women pass upon good men. His job doesn't make him a good man. His grades don't make him a good man. These things don't make, uh, you got a car, don't make you a good man. You got a house, it don't make you a good man. That's the problem that you're lying to these men about. And that's what I have a problem with, right? I don't think the lies necessarily intentional. I think it's a very echo chamber, closed minded kind of viewpoint. Like you said, you only saw Facebook that kind of echoes around the place. And so it then becomes this lie that men lie to themselves amongst other men inadvertently. What do you mean he's good because he has a job? or a good job, or money in the bank. That don't mean you're good. That means you got money in the bank. Okay, let's be real. Because they're not ready to be good women. They're not ready for that. They're ready to have hot girl summer and deal with immature men. Y'all have to understand that. We can watch it again. I'm gonna watch it again. Gee, I'm sorry. I gotta watch it again. Let's get it. Okay, I'll draw you. Convince me on why I should date you. That's the pineapple show. It's all looks. And the reality, fellas, the reality, the truth is, this guy didn't match up to her looks. That's all it is. This guy didn't match up to the looks that she really wanted. Fair point. This is why these kind of guys date outside their race. Hey, shut up. What are you talking about, sir? If he dates outside of his race, that's a his problem. Y'all need to talk to your boy. Y'all need to talk to your boy. That's why these type of guys date outside of their race. First of all, who do you mean these type of guys? You mean this kind of guy? A good guy? A good man? Because that's how you labeled him. Are you saying a good man? Because they've been hurt by women go to date outside their race. Are we not all getting hurt? I got hurt. I didn't start dating white women. Are we not all getting hurt? Does not everybody have a story to tell about how their heart's been broken as a black person, probably by another black person? Does not, does, is there not many people that have a story of being bullied by other black people, men and women? Now, let's not use that as an excuse, sir. If he decides to go white, he was always going to go white. It's, it's just, let, let, let's not do this. But see, you know, Serena Williams and, you know, you know Kamala Harris and all these other women that, that are, are black, they can date outside their race. Nobody bad to eye. But as That's soon as LeBron point. James, you know, go to prom with this white girl, everybody point. wants to say something. He's the enemy. He's fucking prom. Prom is a fucking joke. That's a fair point. Anyway, let me move forward. Every day, bro, he too much for her, bro. I'm and, and, and I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this as a summarize to this video, bro. Sometimes G, you be too much for a chick, my nigga. That's a fair Sometimes, point. Sometimes, bro, you got too much going on for her, bro. That's a fair point. That's what y'all gotta understand. Sometimes you got you got you got too much going on in your life. You 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 too smart, too intelligent. She has to stoop up to your level. And in order for women to do that, they gotta put in work. And women are very comfortable where they at in their life. You already know these women don't gotta self improve to get some sort of attention or to get it some kind of man. So hell, stoop up, stoop up, level up, come up to where the man is. Shit, I might as well keep dealing with these bum ass niggas. And keep complaining about them. I might as well keep dealing with these 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 bum guys and keep complaining about them. That's the reality of it. Man, so now apparently women don't want to work. Not unless you work work, but they want to put the work in to improve themselves. Hmm. I don't think I need to combat that, do I? I, I think that's pretty obvious that's not the case but I, I i i i think you i think you know i think you know i want to just show you something okay i want to show you something 
I want to show you some of the comments, okay? Because it's madness to me. Some of the comments, okay? Let me make it bigger so you can see, okay? That's some of the comments that we have on here, right? And this is what I'm talking about, a problematic aspect. Look what people are saying. That guy's a nuclear physicist in the Navy of the arm. The country has the biggest destructive capacity in the whole planet, age 27. He didn't lose anything, getting rejected a blessing sometimes. All right, cool. Uh, I don't want to hear about a white person. Sweetheart uh, is a 23-year-old, actually for Atlanta Hawks. She's right at the edge of aging of out of the fun girl lifestyle. My best friend was Chicago Bulls leader, and she started uh, having panic attacks around this age because she didn't want to miss her window to pair up with a high-value guy. My chiller, the buddy, ended up marrying a high-value doctor of sports medicine with Olympics. Atlanta Braves at 25. This is the highest, this is the highest sweetheart in video value is going to be as a six SMV, and she's not focused enough. She about to run out of time quickly. Okay, so she's going to run out of time, apparently. Don't worry, he'll date outside his race. She'll be the same one that will have a problem with it. She will explain, she'll even explain why she rejected him. It's nothing but some lame excuses. Okay, too many levels above her. Women like this, all you have to do is walk away. For those of you who don't know, being a nuclear physicist is like being a quarterback of United States missile program. That's lovely, but he's not a quarterback. <laughs> like, he's not. Uh, pretty much that was accurate. Um, it's sad you have to explain it in sports terms. This is what people are looking for in relationships nowadays, status, just like Hollywood killed a plumber and other trade jobs. Okay. Um, <laughs> someone said, obviously, okay, that's a good point. His problem is he doesn't know who he is. If he didn't, if he, if he knew, he wouldn't even be calling to join, trying to qualify. He's the best of our community. And that's what they think about him. He's the best of our community. What is he the best at? It's a job. It don't make you a great human being. Someone said, what is what this has shown me is that it's going to be unpopular to say is that we shouldn't be pushing more black men to marry black women or vice versa. We should be pushing for people to stay with anyone who they have a good vibe with. Wait, 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 wait. Is this not the problem we have? We had a problem with her saying that she wants a vibe. This is what she wants, a vibe. And then now we're using that same point against her and saying they should just go with who they vibe with. Okay. Um, kid has so many options, literally endless options with a kind of intelligence. Her mind didn't work like his. They wouldn't be compatible anyways. This issue she finds interesting and the dedication he has wouldn't align with her, with a chick like her. Fair point. Um, let's see. I don't want to do that. <sighs> Someone said he locked out. A wife needs to be able to see past people with their true intentions. Just really cannot... She can only identify fun. You can tell her mindset isn't where it should be to appreciate a man like this. She would ruin a relationship like this. Mm. She exercised a little power that she had given on social media. Let me tell you something. You can go through all these comments and just see her madness, bro. And it's like, yo, brother, she has every right to say no to the kid. And when she does say no to the kid, now you're vexed and saying he's better than her anyway. Let's just be honest. Sometimes people just don't click. They don't mesh. We ain't got to downgrade them to say that, right? So hopefully I'll get some Manosphere people in the chat, um, in the comment section. We'll have a real conversation around it. you get me? It's time we start pushing back on some of the rhetoric that you guys use, man, because a lot of it is trash. And some of it is true. I can't lie to you. But there's a lot of it that's trash, isn't it, really? Yeah? Appreciate you guys. Say lots, say loaded. We will speak very, very soon. Much love and appreciation, baby. We out of here, baby. Yeah.